that, uh, that, that, that really does give my heart joy. Almost as much joy as my heart received when Cheyenne walked in and hugged me. We're finally getting there. <laughs> it takes a little while. Um, will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we come before you as your faithful people. We stand before the throne of majesty asking your blessing. For we have read from your holy word and now we seek to interpret it. Be with us, guide us, and help us. Protect us that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This text that Ruth read for us, this account of Jesus, is one of those great series of confrontational moments that I started warning you a couple, three weeks ago are, are coming in rapid fire. And this one is one of my favorites. And the reason is, and I know I didn't tell you all of, all of this, is one of my favorite warped, silly, crazy preacher things to do is preach stewardship sermons. Mm. Um, when I was a regional minister, and all the ministers didn't want to preach stewardship, I was like, oh, oh, invite me, I'll come do it, I love them. And they're like, gladly. <laughs> And then I would send them things like texts and titles, and they'd go, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. My personal favorite one, which you're not getting today, is God doesn't need your money. Um, that made other preachers nervous for some reason, but uh, it, it, it ends better than you think. Now, I should warn you, this being October, many of you are saying, hmm, is this the day he's going to hand out pledge cards? Because we're talking about money, and the title is, what shall I give? And the answer is no. Because I'm a crazy troublemaker. And Bill can testify to the fact that at the last board meeting, which I was not able to attend because of my mother, now it's my father-in-law, um, I had a discussion with the board yet again about why I don't like to do pledge cards in the fall and tie them to the budget. Here's the summary. I don't mind telling you. It's going to come out in the newsletter in the next week and a half anyway. That... I think it is more important to find a time when we're talking about and working on spiritual growth to tie our giving to our spiritual growth, to our spiritual wholeness, and talk less about the need of the church to receive. We're going to have a budget. We have a really good idea of what our giving is, so we're going to be able to project a likely income based on what we have done in the past and are oh so incredibly, incredibly thankful for the ministries we get to do. But I want to spend more time this fall talking about the ministries we want to do and the possibilities, and, and, and I'll get you a card eventually. It'll come a little later than you're used to. So if you're not getting a card today, yay, yay. they all said. <laughs> It'll come later, trust me. You'll get one eventually. In the meantime, though, this text, this story of Jesus dealing with the Pharisees, <clears throat> excuse me, dealing with their desire to get him to say a wrong thing, and the trap they have set. Is it lawful to pay the taxes? And Jesus wisely does not give a simple yes or no, but challenges them to reflect on how those taxes are paid. So you know the story. Show me the coin, whose image is on it, whose inscription, whose title. And of course it is Caesar. And he says, give to Caesar that which is Caesar, and give to God that which is God's. Now, in case you haven't forgot, in case you have forgotten, on the very first page of Scripture, in Genesis chapter 1, it says, uh, verse 27, So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. What Jesus didn't say is what you should give to God. 
He dealt with the tax question, right? <clears throat> what he didn't deal with is the more important question we need to deal with. When you look in a mirror, I uh, know this is dangerous. <laughs> when you look in a mirror, what do you see? <laughs> I was waiting for you to fire off first, Alice, when I said, oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> you see your reflection. Maybe you see not what you saw 10 years ago. Maybe you see what you wish you'll see in 10 more. Maybe you see, if you're like me, hairs in places they weren't supposed to be and less hair in places it used to be. <laughs> Maybe not for some of you. Maybe you see, where did that wrinkle come from? Maybe you see a little more gray. I, I remember vividly the day I walked into the um, driver's license office in Wisconsin and, and handed them my license from the state from which we moved. This would have been a little over six years ago. And, and went about getting the Wisconsin license. And um, the lady looked at it. She looked at me. She looked at it. She looked at me. She said, I think it's time to change that hair color. <coughs> All my life, my license said brown. Not so much anymore. That was a tough day. I, just being honest with you, it was a tough day. So when I look in the mirror, when I, when I see that reflection, which isn't even a completely accurate, we're told by social scientists, reflection of that which you see, I find myself desperately clinging to the reminder, wanting to remind you what you see is the image of God. When you look in a mirror, when you look at your neighbor, go ahead, look at your neighbor. Turn, turn your head, not don't look at me. Look at each other. You're not seeing the same image, right? So what is this image of God? Because if I pull out a dollar and look on it, I know I need to give it to George Washington. Or the inscription above it, maybe, which is the United States of America. Or the state of Illinois, as I give more and more to. <laughs> the image of God we see is the heart, the spirit, the desire to share and give love, the, 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 the warmth, the humanity at its best. Right? That's the image I want you to see. And that's the image I want you to ask yourself, well, if that's the image of God, then what am I to give to God? There's an old preacher story that you've probably heard 20, 30 times, but I'll risk it yet again. The offering plates are going around church. There's a little girl who's very upset because she doesn't have anything to put in the plate. It's not that she doesn't want to, it's that she has not reached an age where she's given money because it would just go in the sewer or Watch, go down the toilet or whatever. We've all been through that age, right? So the plate comes by week after week, and she is just so horribly upset by her inability to participate because the adults are putting pieces of paper in and, and, and money and cash and envelopes and all those things, and finally she can't take it anymore, and she puts the plate on the ground and puts her little feet right inside of it and says... This is all I have to give to God. Is me. 
out of the mouths of babes. When we make a gift to God, when we give of our resources, we are giving only a small portion of what God really wants. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. One of my early mentors said, you want to know what you value? Read your checkbook register. <coughs> render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. But render unto God that which is God's. You were made, created beautifully and wonderfully in the image of God. Give God that which is God. And as a bonus, recognize God in everyone you see. Because you're not the sole inhabitor of that image. Thanks be to God. Amen.